following podcast is a production of Radio Felician, the voice of Felician University of New Jersey and the home of alternative rock done right. Available via iHeartRadio. Tune in, the Radio Felician app, and at RadioFelician.com. Radio Felician University. Welcome to The Felician Lantern, shining a light on everything nursing, a podcast from Felician University in New Jersey, exploring current issues in healthcare, speaking to leaders in the field, and preparing the next generation of nurses. Your hosts are Dr. Daria Wazak and Dr. Elizabeth Van Dyke, Associate Deans of the Felician University School of Nursing. Welcome to The Felician Lantern. I'm Daria. And I'm Liz. In today's episode of the Felician Lantern, we have special guest BSN student Kezia Rodriguez. Kezia has an amazing experience we're going to talk about today where she introduced President Biden and had some other experiences, presidential experiences, and we can't wait to delve into her story. Well, thank you for having me. So yes, I had this incredible experience that actually started back in January of 2022 when I was a student at Bergen uh, Community College. Uh, the first lady was coming to visit and she was going to share about, they were going to talk about the um, American Rescue Plan. And so as a student parent, I was chosen to kind of share my story and introduce her at this press event. And I guess they liked me. So uh, back in March of 2022, I was also invited to the State of the Union. Um, which was an incredible experience. I was able to go to the White House with my husband. We had dinner there, and then I was part of the motorcade to the Capitol building and got to experience that. Um, and just when I thought that kind of was done and all behind me, um, April of last year, I received a text message from um, somebody from the First Lady's office, and he was like, hey, we're going to reach out to you. And I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> here we go again. Um and that's when I was asked to introduce the president at an event where he was signing an executive order to um, to help caregivers. Um, and so I was invited. And this time I was able to bring my twin girls, they're five, um, and my husband. And it was kind of like a family affair. We got to tour the White House and go to the Oval Office. And yeah, and then I was able to introduce the first uh, the president at this event in the Rose Garden. So. Wow, that's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah. and that's an amazing several events. So why don't we peel back a little bit more to like how it all first happened when you first introduced Dr. Lady Jill Biden. How did you kind of come about even just being selected to do that and kind of what led up to that event? So that's a whole story in and of itself. So I'm sitting at home just relaxing and I get so my daughters are part of their the child development program at Bergen. So because I'm a, I'm a student parent, I was a full-time student, and I um, received a Pell Grant, I was eligible to have free child care. So with twin kids, to go to school, that was like the best thing ever. So I'm at home, and I receive an email from the uh, lady that runs the program. And she's like, hey, the first lady is coming to visit the school, and they're asking um, for bios from student parents and if you would like to meet the first lady and she was coming at a time I had class I was like actually like I can I have class like I I called my husband I'm like oh such a nursing student (laughs) I was like oh listen like this just happened then he was just like what like what class like you're gonna so I'm like I wrote back to her I was like you know what I'm gonna reach out to my professor and I'll, I'll see what I can do so I wrote my bio basically sharing my experience and honestly just how grateful I was for that program because it was the only way I was able to go to school was because of that program. The only reason I'm in nursing school is because of that program. My hard work too, but that program allowed me to do what I was able to do. And so I was basically chosen. I guess they liked my bio so much that they actually ended up selecting me to introduce the first lady. And even when I received that email, I didn't think I was going to be giving a speech. I thought I was going to walk around campus like, hi, this is the first lady. (laughs) (laughs) One day told me I had to write a speech and I received the call like, hi, this is, I don't remember their names, but hi, this is so-and-so from the first lady's office. Um, We're here to help you write your speech. I'm like, well, a speech. (laughs) They're like, oh yeah, just, just a five minute speech, you know, sharing your story and whatnot. So that was like, and it was, uh, they gave me one day to write a speech. I wrote this, I I found out on 
I think it was Monday, and I introduced her on Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. And you introduced her where? where? At Bergen Community College. At the college, yes. I see. Yes. And how did they help? They ha- You wrote it on your own. Yes. You? So I wrote the speech on my own, and then I would just basically send it to them, um, and they would just see if it was okay, and it was... Yeah, that was basically, they were kind of like edit it for me. They, they gave you little edits or yeah. little pointers yeah. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so, how did that experience transition to you going to D.C.? So I guess when they invite people to the State of the Union, it's people that they've interacted, which is what I saw. Most of the people that had been there either introduced the first lady or introduced the president at some point or had some sort of interaction with them. Um, but I just remember it was like Sunday in eight in the morning and I'm just in bed and I'm like, Washington, D.C., oh boy, here we go. (laughs) And I answer and it's like, hi, it's John from the First Lady's office. Like, we have exciting news. Like, would you like to come to the State of the Union? And I was just like, here we go. It's always like a whirlwind. It's like they give you no time to prepare. So, yeah. So you and your husband went went to to Washington, D.C. Yes. Yeah, they covered... Our expense, transportation, they got us a hotel, and we're just going. At first, my husband was also like, oh, I'm not going to go. Like, I have to work. I'll stay with the girls. And then I'm You're just like. so committed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, wait, like, this is the White House. Like, this is kind of like a thing, you know? And I had no outfits. Every time I'm running to the mall to get something to wear. Um, so, yeah, so we went to, to D.C., and we got ready at the hotel, and then they picked us up from the hotel, took us to the White House, Um where they had like an orchestra waiting. We like felt like royalty. I was like orchestra and like waiters with like uh, uh, wine and champagne and food or hors d'oeuvres. And I'm just like, this is too much. But it, it was it was a great time. And the first lady and the second gentleman, I think that's how you, they were both. They were there. And also um, the president's sister was at this reception. Um, and it was also I got to meet the ambassador for Ukraine. It was during that time it was the first state of the union that was also it was it was an incredible experience for sure what was it like arriving to the white house like i shared that i recently went to the white house for a, as a visitor tour and the ordeal just getting through security to get in what was it like for you arriving as as an invited guest so since i've been there twice they were actually both very different experiences <laughs> Um, there's a whole preparation before you go in, um, vaccination status, background checks for you and whoever you're bringing. Um, and then, so when I went for the state of the union, it was actually a a little more simple since they had all our information. We kind of just had to show up with your ID. They, we came in a bus and like a van. So we all kind of like, they checked our IDs, checked, we walked through the metal detectors and then. We were kind of in. We had our little badges. Um, When I went this last time, we kind of like walked ourselves in. So it was more of like security, security, security. But um, the individual, I don't remember his name, but the individual who was kind of my person that would like take us, um, he just kind of walked us. He met us at the security gate and we kind of just like walked through all these checkpoints and we had to do COVID testing before getting in and whatnot. But yeah. It's a lot of security and checking your ID and checking this and checking that. So, That's amazing. So what was it like to be kind of in places within the White House that normally, you know, as a citizen just doing a normal White House tour that, you know, you're you're not able to get to? So, like, you know, just the history and just walking down those halls. It's like, like, don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, when we went for the reception the first time when I was invited to the State of the Union, walking down like the hall to get to the reception area, it's truly like a powerful like walk, especially when it's not like, oh, other people are there. Like you're there for the same reason you were invited. You do kind of feel the weight of the building. I feel like it, like history has really gone down here. My husband is like a big history person. So he's just like, oh, this is incredible. I'm, I'm not so much, but like you do feel it. Um, but however, when I went the last time, seeing my daughters there and having and seeing that like my hard work and then my mother hood experience like because of them i'm also there you know because this all came about with me being a mother student you know so just seeing them there and like being able to go into the oval office and seeing them sit 
on the president's desk and like pick up the phone and like them tell the president that they want to be president one day too. <laughs> the only thing that upset me was one of my daughters picked up the phone and the president was like, oh, who are you calling? She's like, I'm calling daddy. I was like, you're not, <laughs> not <Sweet>. mommy. <laughs> So so walk us through then to the third time, your third encounter that you were just referring to. So you're back home, State of the Union address is finished, yeah, so and you resume normal yeah, life, life, normal yeah, mommy the life. State of the Union finished Nursing March. school. Yeah, I finished over that summer. I finished my associate's degree. I applied to Felician, and now I'm in Felician, and I'm like, that's all behind me. But that was Bergen, you know, um, I'm, it's kind of done. I didn't even think about it anymore. It came up occasionally when people asked about fun facts. That's kind of my fun fact. Um, but it was kind of behind me. And I'm in fundamentals clinical, and I get this message, and I kind of like, I'm like hit. It's like a wave, just kind of like, because I kind of had a feeling this was going to happen. Once I saw his name, I didn't imagine before i see his name and i'm just like oh boy <laughs> here we go um the same gentleman from the first lady's the office the same gentleman from the first lady's office yes and he kind of like passed me along to somebody else and the when they asked me this was on saturday and they're like oh we would like you to come to this event the president citing an executive order you know um with the intention to help caregivers and so I'm like, of course, like, I'll go. And they're like, oh, this time we're not going to cover your transportation. You kind of come because you want to be part of this event. And I was like, of course, I'm not going to. Regardless, you know, it's still a great opportunity. And so I had to call my husband. I'm like, listen, like, I'm going to be at the White House on Tuesday. You have to stay with the girls. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. And Sunday afternoon, I'm having frozen yogurt with my kids and my husband. And they call me and I'm like, Every time they call me, my heart kind of stops. <laughs> what next? Yeah, what next? And they're like, actually, we'd like you to introduce the president at the event. I was like, wait, wait, wait. The the president, like Joe Biden <laughs> president. And they're like, yeah. Um, you know, you had such a great experience with Jill. Um, uh, Dr. Joe Biden really recommended you. She loves you. Like, she still talks about you. And I was just like, well, okay. <laughs> like, no pressure. And this time I, I did feel a, a bit more nervous um, than I did the first time. I don't know, I guess because... I was, Bergen was kind of like a safe place because I go to school there. So I kind of know the environment going to the White House and then having to like introduce the president, you know, I was just kind of like, whoa. Um, and they were just like, yeah, it's the same process. Write the speech. We'll edit it. Um, and yeah, so then Monday I'm at the mall again trying to find something to wear, trying to find something for my girls to wear. <laughs> and we ended up driving that night. So we didn't want to. I had an exam the fall, the day after the speech. So I was like, we need to go. Like, I don't want to stretch Tuesday out too much. And I'm big on being in places on time. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to risk us getting traffic, something happening. So we drove out Monday night. We stayed at a hotel. And yeah, Tuesday morning was kind of just like, I barely slept that night. I was just like, woke up and everything is just like chaos. Um, I was like, oh, great. But we got ready and yeah, we went. We we drove near the White House, parked, and we just kind of walked in. And yeah, you did such a professional job and you're <laughs> poised. And it, it was really, you did a really good job. Yeah, I was so nervous. The second time was definitely more nerve wracking. Did you get a chance to meet the president before you introduced him in front of the crowd? Like, where did you? Like, yes. kind of, like, meet him and... Yes, so I actually of... had met him at the State of the Union. Um, following the State of the Union, we kind of... We met briefly um, with the First Lady. We, there was pictures and whatnot. But yes, at the last event, my family, my daughters and my husband, met with him in the Oval Office. We got to spend, like, 10 minutes with him talking. Um, I think the girls kind of stole the moment. Because... <laughs> is that is that when they were picking up the Yeah, that's when they the were phone able to... And... Yes, yes. So. What was their? Uh, what do they think of this? Oh, they think it's the, it's so incredible. They're just, they always talk about it. They never forget. They got lots of cookies. They got like bags of cookies and chocolates. Um, they were treated like royalty. As soon as we got there, they took us around, um, gave us like a brief tour. Um, they took my husband to the cafeteria and they come up with like all this food. And the girls are just like, oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I was like, don't get used to this. <laughs> um, and they just honestly felt like celebrity. They got to, after after um, the event at the Rose Garden, there was a press event. And they were just kind of like, while I'm in, getting interviewed, they're just like running around and just like we're able to do roll on the grass. It was like they had a ball. 
they had a ball. So you're finished in the Oval Office, and then you have to walk, like, how far? Okay, okay so where do you that, go from there? That, I think, was probably the most memorable moment for me, and I feel like the most impactful was, so we were, at, we're all at the Oval Office, and so security comes, and they take my family, they take my husband and my daughters to have them sit, um, seated. The girls were actually seated next to Nancy Pelosi, and I, <laughs> it was like a whole thing. So... As, like, the president and I are waiting, like, security, like, Secret Service is, like, kind of talking to him, getting him ready. And I'm just there, like, okay. <laughs> like, this is this is really it. And I'm in the Oval Office, and I hear something along the lines of, like, okay, um, President Joe Biden accompanied by Kezia Rodriguez. And, like, hearing the two names together and seeing all these people and just like having this whole moment where we walked from the Oval Office to the Rose Garden where the podium was, I was like, my knees were weak. I was like, I was wearing heels. I was like, I chose the worst day to wear these heels. <laughs> but it was a beautiful day. I, it was beautiful. Beautiful it was day. Sunny day. Blue skies. Yeah, it was it was a perfect day. And then walking and then seeing my daughters and my husband sitting in the front seat with like Nancy Pelosi and like all these people. I was just like. I, 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 it was really an emotional moment for me. Yeah, I almost, I, I don't know, I was, I was nervous speaking. I, I'm surprised I didn't just start crying. <laughs> Have you been in contact with them since then? So the, you're on the Christmas card list now. <laughs> uh, actually, yes, I received, <laughs> I do receive, I received pictures. They mail me pictures um, and I did receive a Christmas card actually. But that has been like about it up to now yeah i mean i don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see what the happens. sky's the limit you never know <laughs> yeah we'll see what happens but yes it was exciting to receive that christmas card too. it was like a nice little pop-out card <laughs> this is the felician lantern shining a light on everything nursing now you're in your junior year so just thinking ahead what are your plans for your career after you complete your education here at Felician, or do you have any thoughts of doing anything in politics in any way? So that's interesting. I get that question so often mm. because, um, yeah, like you go to the White House. I'm not a very political person. I, maybe it's just like I don't know, you know, like I've, I've never really gotten myself into politics. So it's even interesting that I've lived all of this. And I remember like in press conferences, like getting asked political questions and I'm like, I'm just kind of like a regular person and is sharing just my experience and how grateful I am that I was able to get some help while going to school, just like a regular hardworking family. Um, I do, well, with nursing, I do want to go into the emergency department. Like that's kind of where I see myself headed now. I wouldn't, maybe nursing politics, maybe something mm -hmm. along those lines. Um, I'm very passionate about people. I, and passionate about helping people. And this has kind of brought about so, an awareness to non-traditional students. And Felician and the nursing program is very rich in non-traditional students. A lot of my classmates are mothers in kind of similar situations, not just the young, you know, that just like, oh, straight, kind out, of, of, straight yeah, out of high school straight without out of a care in the world. Yes, right? I always mm -hmm. see those and I'm like, like you're you're really doing it because you know it's it's not that easy. You see young students and it's kind of like oh whatever, but no, like it's it's kind of hard. As a non traditional student, you can kind of appreciate that. Um, so maybe something along those lines. I'm not really sure like how I would fit in. You know, like what can be done, but I'm not gonna like um, rid myself of anything. You know, I'm gonna allow myself to experience what comes, and if I can use this situation to like put me in a place where I can help people, like, I'm not going to say no to that opportunity. Well, I say, if you can introduce the first lady and the president, I think that the sky's the limit for you. You can do anything. You can stand up and advocate for any cause and for any reason, um, because how much more nervous could you be? <laughs> that is, that, that's, that's a good point. I had never thought of it that way. It was just in those speeches and in those moments, it's something that, it's truly meaningful to me, something that I'm living. You know, it's not easy to go to school. It's not easy to be a mom. And it's not easy to give 100% of yourself to both those things. And then I can't even imagine the moms that work while going to school and while having kids. So I was truly grateful for the help 
that I was able to receive. My husband, my husband's a truck driver. He works crazy hours. He's the only, he has worked since I was six months pregnant. I haven't worked. Two kids, you know, childcare is so expensive. And I do give a lot of thanks to my husband because I could have, he could have just been like, okay, stay with the kids. And then like, when you're done, just do whatever. But he was just like, you're home, like go after your career. So he's the one that pushed me to go to school. He's the one that pushed me to go to Bergen. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. And just helping me, supporting me got me honestly to like the rooms that I've been able to enter and the spaces I've been able to then also bring my family along with me. Well, Kezia, thank you so much <laughs> for shining this wonderful spotlight on your story. And I do think that you will be an advocate. You are an advocate. and. I'm excited to see what comes in the future. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you, Kezia. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. <laughs> this podcast has been a production of Radio Felician, the voice of the Franciscan University of New Jersey. The views expressed are solely those of the hosts and guests and are not official statements of Felician University. Visit Radio Felician on the web anytime at radiofelician.com. Want to send an email? Reach out at radio station at felician.edu. Radio Felician, the Falcon.